Well, I want to open tonight by giving my thoughts on this whole uh, Jordan Neely situation that the left is protesting tonight. It very well could turn into George Floyd 2.0. In fact, we are nearing the three year anniversary of George Floyd. So uh, I want to give you kind of the rundown. We'll talk about the entire thing. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about it, but maybe if not, maybe if you've not been on Twitter or whatever the last few hours, uh, let me kind of give you the breakdown of the situation. Now, just disclaimer here. I really do wish I could just show you the pictures and the video so that way we could have the context and you can fully see what I'm talking about. But I will say, you know, YouTube has its graphic content policies. I'm just going to avoid just taking the chance there altogether. I mean, you can see it for yourself. I'm sure many of you have seen it or you will see it, but I will just do my best to try to describe it all to you. So let's 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 explain kind of what happened here and what all the racial activists are up in arms about so i don't know if you've ever been to a new york city to new york city i don't know if you've ever been on a new york city subway i honestly hope that you have had the privilege of not having to do that but uh, if you have i have and i'm sure many of you have you will know that crazy drugged up homeless people constantly th screaming and threatening people is a very common occurrence right <laughs> on the new york city subway i have witnessed it i even have friends who have lived in new york who have had close encounters with the razor blading thing and that's basically this practice where people will slash your face with a razor blade before the train stops usually they'll take the person this is a real thing in new york city again maybe you've never heard about this i didn't hear about this until i heard from some locals about it Basically, what these people will do is uh, they'll, they'll pick the person sitting close to the door on the subway. And when you hit a stop and the door opens, they'll literally run up to the person, slash their face and then just run off the subway. OK, so that's New York City. That's the New York City subway for you. So um, this is I think, you know, I think a lot of us know this is how it is in New York City. This is a reality of trying to take public transit in that city. So essentially what happened in this incident with uh, Jordan Neely, I think is his name, uh, is that one of those crazy drugged up homeless men who, by the way, I should note this. This was a guy who, you know, again, this is the tweaker on the subway, has been arrested over 40 times. And at the time of this, had an active felony warrant out for felony assault at the time for his arrest. So, you know, obviously a very out, totally upstanding member of society. I'm sure he was on his way to medical school, you know, right before that. He was a, certainly a future doctor and engineer, right? You know, he was a good kid, right? He was a good kid. Anyways, so essentially what happened here in this incident is this tweaked out homeless guy who, again, let me say that again, arrested over 40 times, exactly 41 times in his life, had an active warrant out for felony assault. Uh, he was on the subway doing what a lot of people do on the subway in New York City, which is screaming at people, violently threatening people. And while he's violently threatening to hurt people on the subway, this white dude, which you might say, Vince, why are you even pointing out the races? Well, I have to point out the races because you know that this is going to be used against him. And, you, you know, you like, you know, that's a big part of the left wing narrative here, which is why I have to bring it up. OK, um, you know, it, it's making headlines here that a white dude did it to a black dude. That's why I have to point it out. So basically what happens is this white dude, this white bystander tries to subdue the tweaked out homeless guy, he basically chokes him out, right? He puts him in a chokehold. The guy is kind of like flailing. He passes out. And then it turned out in the end, I, I don't think that it was intentional or, you know, for the record, even if that's what killed him. But it turns out in the end that the homeless guy ended up dying, right? He ended up dying. And I'm not going to say yet dying as a result of the chokehold. Again, that could be true, but it could also be true. I'm just saying it could also be true that he was tweaked out on drugs and it was a combination of the two George Floyd type of thing. I don't know, but we saw what happened the last time this whole thing. The guy's drugged out of his mind. Uh, but anyways, kind of with that context here, let me read for you just straight from the New York Post article so you can get an idea of what happened here and then I'll give you my thoughts, okay? So here we go. Dramatic new video shows a 
strap hanger. I don't even know what that means. Taking matters into his own hands, pinning down an unhinged man in a deadly incident at a Manhattan subway station this week. The 24 year old passenger stepped in after the vagrant. So this is the tweaked out homeless guy identified by sources as Jordan Neely, who was 30, began going on an aggressive rant in northbound F train Monday afternoon, according to police and a witness who took the video. And uh, an independent freelance journalist said he starts to make a speech. He started screaming in an aggressive manner, Vasquez told the Post. He had no he, he said that he, he had no food, he had no drink, that he was tired and that he doesn't care if he goes to jail. He started screaming all these things. He took off his jacket, a black jacket that he had, and then threw it on the ground. Again, this is what these crazy tweaked out homeless guy is saying. And apparently uh, that's when the strap hanger came up behind Neely and took him to the ground in a chokehold, keeping him there for 15 minutes. Vasquez said the approximately three and a half minute long video, which, again, I can't play on YouTube for graphic content purposes, but the approximately three and a half long video shot by Vasquez shows the blonde subway rider lying on the floor of the train with his arm wrapped around the, the man's neck. Uh, the train was stopped when the doors opened, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the conductor had called 911. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are bringing up why keep him there for 15 minutes. Well, I would also ask the question, why did it take responders 15 minutes to get there? It's a subway station. You would think, uh, you know, it, that wouldn't be such a hard thing to do. Um, but anyways, there you have it. There's basically the incident that happened here. This crazy homeless guy is running around on the on the train, th threatening people, right, screaming at people. And uh, the, the moment he takes off his jacket, he throws his jacket on the ground, which what 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 do people normally do that before? Yeah, when they're about to throw hands, when they're about to start fighting. OK, uh, you know, this is uh, this is the case. And I'm not going to scroll further down in the article because, again, graphic content. But the reason why, in case you're curious, even in New York City, even in New York City, which you could imagine, right? We know how it is there. Even in New York City. They have they have yet to actually charge the so-called strap hanger with anything because they're doing an autopsy to examine whether or not the chokehold is even actually the reason why he died, because like we said, drugs were involved. So just as as a matter of just fact and a statement of fact, we don't know for yet if the chokehold even is in the end what killed him. But anyways, there's the story. OK, there's the, the facts kind of of the story. Now, as you could imagine, the left is incredibly up in arms over this. They are protesting tonight. Who knows? We may see another summer of love. But here's my thing. OK, here's my thing on this entire situation. First off, on the incident itself, on kind of what went down here. I'm going to be honest. OK, you know, attack me, whatever. I really have principally, morally speaking, very little to nothing wrong with what the vigilante here actually did. Because you know what that is to me? That's a cl classic case of F-A-F-O. Do you guys know what that stands for? F-A-F-O? Uh, if people in chat can, you know, kind of explain what that stands for. Now, the problem, though, is that our justice system obviously does not see it that way, which is why I would say vigilanteism in this case, while it, it I think is a noble thing to do, perhaps, or the morally right thing to do, it is discouraged by the justice system in the 21st century. We'll talk about that in a second. But principally speaking, let me just say again, if you're going around on a train violently threatening innocent people again, to me, it's sort of an F, F around and find out situation, right? To me, especially when you're throwing down your jacket and saying all these violent things, I, I largely think in many ways that constitutes a situation of self-defense. OK, and I, I know that what the tweaker did in this situation is considered normal in New York City. OK, I saw a lot of liberals coping about that, saying, oh, you know, this is normal. It happens all the time. You know, yeah, it happens all the time that violent, cracked out homeless people threaten people on subways in New York City. Therefore, the vigilante here is wrong for, uh, you know, taking it seriously and doing what he did. I mean, sure, to an extent, it is true that in your garbage asshole city, crazy homeless people do indeed, right, violently threaten and threaten subway goers all the time. But how is that an excuse? Oh, it happens a lot. It happens all the time. Therefore, this crazy, psychotic, 
violent person's threats should not be taken seriously. He shouldn't have taken those threats seriously. Is that what the, you know, people making excuses are really saying here? Because you can say that you can say, oh, it happens all the time. Threats happen all the time. Why are you taking this homeless guy seriously? But you know what else happens a lot on New York City subways? Violence. Actual violence, you fugazi. OK, that's what happens a lot in New York City. Yeah. What happens also happens a lot, and you see it in the videos, you see it when people get pushed in the subways and all this stuff, all the fights that break out on the F train in Manhattan. What happens a lot is the violent threats spoken oftentimes by these tweaked out homeless people become actual violence. OK, and so in this case here, you have again, let me reiterate this, this guy, Jordan Neely, you have a guy here who was a psychopath who's been arrested 41 times in his life. Okay, this guy's been arrested 41 times in his life, and not just that, oh, he's changed. He's changed, you know, the, on the 42nd time, he's now changed. No, the guy had an active warrant out for felony assault. So you mean to tell me that if this guy, a violent felon, wanted for assault, okay, wanted for assault, while obviously on drugs, starts to violently threaten an entire subway of passengers, you mean to tell me that that should not be taken seriously? That that should not be viewed as an imminent threat? Absolutely ridiculous. No, yes, it should be viewed as an, em as an imminent threat, right? Yes, you should assume that a drugged up guy threatening violence, actively threatening violence, saying he's going to commit violence is about to become violent, especially when he takes off his jacket and throws it on the ground. OK, now, in fairness, what I will say is that what the vigilante did do is in some ways, you know, while it is heroic, right, he got that entire subway out of danger. Who knows? He may have saved lives. Is it true that vigilanteism is not necessarily the smartest thing to do in modern America? Yes. Right. Not because it's inherently wrong. It's not. In fact, you could argue that it's inherently right. It's principally right. But the issue is that the entire justice system does not allow for it. Right. If you step up and defend yourself, much less defend others, we all know that you are going to be labeled the bad guy. And that is what I'll say in this case. That is unfortunately true. It's New York City. It's Manhattan. OK, you know that Alvin Bragg is going to make sure this guy is locked up. They're certainly going to be out to get this guy. And it doesn't help that there's a racial component to it. It doesn't help that there's so much social pressure. I can virtually guarantee you that if the left does end up going protesting and presumably starts rioting and, and doing whatever. Yeah. You know, I certainly pray for this man. But uh, and again, I, I don't think what he did in itself was wrong, but I think that given our current justice system and again, I don't think it should be that way. But really, the only option that you have realistically, according to the justice system, is to retreat at all costs. And since he didn't do that and since he tried to actually step in and be a hero, you know, we know how it is. We know that there's a system of anarcho tyranny. Being a hero gets you in trouble. On one hand, the cops won't actually step up. On one hand, they'll make the, the city incredibly dangerous. And, you know, the, the, the politicians will do nothing to actually lock up criminals. But as we know, on the other hand, if you actually step up and try to defend yourself or try to defend others, we know it's probably going to happen. So I'm not very optimistic about what the outcome will be of this case. But that's just my personal take on it. Regardless, it doesn't really matter, though. Right. Because, again, you know, as much as I can say, well, just from a justice system perspective, it's uh, what's done is done. Right. It's, it's now time to focus on what will happen to this guy and what will happen, although it's not happened yet, is that he will likely get charged and New York City is going to do everything it can to try to take this guy down, all of that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I obviously cannot stand for that. I will not stand for that. Again, what this guy did, you know, we, 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 we know. <laughs>
Hey guys, Vince Dow here. Hope you enjoyed that clip from our show. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to check out our other clips and check out the Vince Dow show live every weekday of the night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. This has been the first week of the show. It's been going great. The people have been loving it. So again, 8 p.m. Eastern time live Mondays through Fridays here on YouTube. You do not want to miss it. Thanks and God bless.